evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are tuning in from. Uh, we are live with day one of Hipter Festival. I'm so happy to have you every, all here. And it's so nice to have all our colleagues joining us as well, some of, uh, of them remotely. So I would just like to say uh, welcome. Sorry about the delay. We had we mixed up times because we forgot about winter time in Europe, but no problem. We managed to fix that. So uh, I, I just want to give this a quick round for my colleagues to say hello as well, and then and then start up with the first uh, session. Alex. Hi, hi everybody. Really happy to to see so much of you guys in here and I'm really looking forward to all the panels that are going to to happen today and I'm really really excited to to be a part of this conference as uh, as basically uh, most of our colleagues are. Jasper Okay, hello everyone. Uh, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the Hiptar Festival and uh, I am super excited to be here, not only because uh, this is the beginning of a whole week of intriguing discuss discussions in a variety of topics, but also because it is my very first time participating in a conference as a speaker, so I hope you all, uh, you all are just as excited as I am. In any case, uh, thank you for being with us today and I'm looking forward to seeing you for the whole week. Well said. Yeah, it's going to be a full week of conferences, five conferences indeed. And let's already give a first start and, and, and uh, invite Oliver Litz, uh, CEO of NanoCosmos, uh, to uh, highlight his keynote speech. Hi, Oliver. Nice to see you. Hi, Zoltan. Nice to see you. Okay, Thanks for so, having me here. Hope so, everyone is fine. I think you can already get started, right? Sure. So if you would like to run the presentation, it's pre-recorded, but I'm back in about okay. 80 minutes, and then we can discuss some topics. Okay, see you soon. See you. Hello, everybody. My name is Oliver. I'm the CEO and founder from NanoCosmos. We provide an ultra low latency live streaming platform called NanoStream Cloud. I will share some use cases around interactive live streaming, what that is and how you can solve technical challenges around this. What all these applications have in common is they are interactive, they are low latency for any audience size in the world with a global scale, browser based and can be integrated into custom web applications for B2B branded usage. I will also put the focus a bit on hybrid events. As in the last two years, everybody was live online only, mostly from home and no one on stage. Now slowly events are coming back to stage again with physical presence. And the hybrid use case is here to stay where both physical attendees and online attendees are available at the same time. I see two main scenarios for interactive live streaming where audience engagement is really key. Scenario one is live events. They all have a similar setup. There is a presenter or a group of presenters and an audience which would like to interact with the presenters. The presenters can be either on stage or online or both, which I would call hybrid. This is different to traditional broadcast applications where you are maybe sitting on a couch or in a lean back scenario enjoying and watching a stream. It's more like a lean forward activity where the audience is really doing something, interacting with the presenter group. Some use cases are webcasting, remote presentations, e-learning, which can be in enterprise environments, business environments. It can be panel discussions, political discussions, town hall meetings, or entertainment events like Knife Musics. And all these use cases have several things in common. They are scalable to any audience size, they are accessible on any browser, on any device very easily. The target latency is very low, around one second end-to-end, glass-to-glass. And they also have a monetized business case behind it, which require the interactivity and which require low latency live streaming. Scenario number two is a bit different. It's not based on specific larger events for larger audiences. It's more based on a recurring event type of um, application where you have a revenue channel, uh, recurring revenue channel, monetized content, 
based on a monetized video and uh, an act business activity behind that. That could be uh, live auctions, live betting, live games, or even live retail, where you have a sales channel. And they have similar requirements as the event-based model. It needs to be at a global scale, any audience size, easy to use as well. Um, in these uh, applications, it's more and more use, used to have mobile first approach. That means that mo many or most uh, part of the audience is on mobile and on the browser to directly access the event or the live stream. Needs to be very robust. 100% SLA is the aim to really keep the recurring um, revenue channel running all the time. Interactive live streaming is easy to adopt to certain business use cases. Here you see example applications which have a monetized business model with a recurring revenue stream. Live auctions, betting and gaming. On the left you see a live auction application by an Australian company called Gavel, who do a high value real estate auction system. This is all running on mobile and the browser on any device. Bidders can be part of the live auction experience on their phones. Let's have a look at the iGaming use case. This can be a live game from a land-based casino table or from a studio. Also, it can be any interactive game or gamification you can add to your business environment. You can create your own gaming logic and focus on your business ideas around games and the live video is just one element of a web page which you can rely on. So you don't need to worry about video stability or quality. Let's have a look at more examples for interactive live streaming with audience interaction. But let's first go into more detail about the event use case, because that's very exciting as we are more and more going hybrid. So these cases can be webcasts, conferences, town hall meetings, podium discussions, wherever someone is sharing something on stage or online. So it can be can be live on stage with people sitting on a, on a venue or on, uh, on a stage and discussing something. Or it can be completely online like we are now in this conference here. Or it can be a mixed setup. So it can be hybrid, a mixture of physical presence and online presence. And the event then is to be shared with a live audience, which can be of any audience size anywhere in the world, which can join the discussion, which can interact, which can ask questions, give any feedback to this session. Let's give an example. A large corporation, 2,000 employees, five locations in the world. Everybody in the, uh, in, the, in the company is supposed to join and interact with the presenters. So how can this be organized? I can see two challenges here. First of all, it needs to be very robust, so you can't lose anybody. Everybody needs to stay connected, have a stable video connection on their device. And number two, immediate interaction, which means you need to really have low latency and a stable live stream on your device to be able to um, support this interactive live stream experience. That means ultra low latency around the world in about one second. And Last but not least, of course, it needs to be easy to use, not only for the audience, which should be able to join on the browser by directly opening their, their browser and, and, and internet access device, but also the production preparation and overhead should be low, so the whole event is able to be prepared, cost efficient and easy to use and lightweight somehow. Let's have a look at podium discussion. There is a live situation on stage with several panelists. This event then is sent as a live stream to a global audience. Viewers can join the discussion from anywhere in the world on any device in the browser. They can ask questions and interact with the presenters at any time. And the presenters can directly react to the questions which are asked by the audience. Here you see an example which is done by the additional tool Slido which is a great tool to sharing questions and give feedback to an audience to the presenters. Here's another example. It's an expert hearing. So also something like a podium discussion, but somehow the opposite because no one is on stage here. Everybody is online, some are in their own home office. It's a virtual meeting like this conference is now. So this then is shared as a live stream to a global audience and the great thing is about the user experience here is good because you have everything in the browser. You have the video conference in the browser, you have the interaction in the browser. Everybody can ask questions and directly interact with the presenters. This example here was an expert hearing by the European Parliament Group um, about 
Google and Apple experts sharing technology behind the COVID-19 tracing app technology. They were using Zoom as a conference tool, which also works very well, which can be combined to a live streaming platform, which then is shared on a web page to interact with the global audience. And the audience then does not need Zoom anymore. What I might find most, most exciting is some of the hybrid use case, which is a combination of physical presence and online presence. So you have someone on stage or several people on stage and they are combined by people joining from the online space. So in this case, you see that there is one person on stage and several people uh, joining online. It's a great user experience also for the audience because uh, you both both the uh, panelists, uh, all, the, all the panelists are seen on the, on the screen. And the audience then can additionally interact with the whole presentation um, setup by sharing that in the browser, adding Q&A sessions, giving feedback, whatever interaction is required for these things. Here you see an example for a full integrated event management platform. This is based on the Open Slides platform, which is an open source platform, but hosted by a commercial provider, which can provide uh, live event management around this. So you have management tools like uh, speaker lists, voting, chat, things like that. And you additionally have the possibility to add live streams and live communication to the system to enable interactive live streaming to large audiences. This is also a good example to see how easy it is to integrate our NanoStream solution into a complex event management platform. The audience can be unlimited, browser-based. We don't care if it's 5,000, 10,000 or more participants. And this is then all branded for B2B applications. It needs to be very stable, robust. Uh, high SLA is very important. Integrated into the business environments, accessible on any device. Very important for business applications, privacy and security concerns. So we can comply to GDPR and other regulations. So it can be any uh, important business content like industrial things, steel, construction, legal or medical content. And the focus is really on getting the audio video content transferred in a robust and reliable way, no matter where the audience is located and on which device they are accessing this. Let's now have a look at different use cases, live music and live concerts. Live events like these have, a, have suffered quite a lot in the pandemic in the last months and years. And the industry is really looking for additional revenue streams and how they can monetize the content and still reach their fans and give a great user experience. That's a great example here as it creates new ways of fan engagement with added value to the live stream. Live performances are not only on stage anymore with live fans, but also sent from home, from bedroom, living room concerts in a small environment and shared with the audience. And how can you create a better user experience and fan experience? With a low latency live stream, the artists can connect to the audience and fans, and they can give feedback directly in form of comments and questions. That's a really good example also for the hybrid use case. The artist directly connects to the fans. They have a video feed. It's a video communication directly between fans and artists. They can be part of the communication. And this whole um, event is then shared with a large audience, which still can be part of the event and also interact with the presenter. So it's, it's a great new setup, which is in this case was hosted by Live Nation, a live concert agency. The performer was on stage in Europe. And the fans were located all around the world. It was primarily in North Africa, so it was very difficult to get people directly to the venues and to live concerts in these days. But it was a great benefit and great value for the organizers, for the performers, and also for the fans to have this setup running and with direct connection and fan engagement between the performer and the audience. In a similar setup, fans can also directly text the artist and also buys things, send likes and comments, but donate, do donations, small amounts of money, buy merchandise during the show. And this also enables new ways of monetizing the live video content. So what is needed to create interactive live streaming applications? Let me go a bit into more detail here.
you need several things. To make a live content interactive, you need a reliable streaming platform for with a global approach, which is fully under your control end to end and which supports the ultra low latency live streaming service, which you require for your interactive use cases. The basics of an interactive live streaming is this network and additionally the player, which is running on all devices. So you open up the browser, you directly see the live stream and the live stream then connects to the closest location in the cloud on the network, which you, your provider has. This approach needs to be available 24 seven, 365 on any time, anywhere in the world. The global approach with a distributed network is very important for a high quality of service. We have several customers in Europe or North America who have viewers in Southeast Asia. A reliable service across continents is key for maintaining the interactive experiences. Additionally, it helps mitigating certain challenges around legal rights like privacy. Also security concerns are important to keep the content protected at any time to avoid any misuse. Nanostream Cloud is really unique as a combination of software and services for ultra low latency live streaming for interactive use cases because it has the network, the global CDN for ultra low latency live delivery at any scale anywhere in the world. It has the player, very lightweight, easy to embed on any web application. Additionally, it has really good tools for getting insight into the quality of service. We provide a metrics and analytics service for that. We have flexible ingest options so you can connect any camera, any live ingest, live encoding software or service or hardware to the platform. And we have a very unique live transcoding adaptive bitrate control in the player built in, which adjusts automatically to the best possible quality of the network available to any device anywhere in the world, even in hostile network situations. So this combination of software and services makes us really unique. To really get full insight into the quality of service, we created this metrics and analytics platform. So we collect metrics from the players, from our so servers, anywhere in the world. So it's good to get an insight onto the quality of service for our support team, but also for you as, as a customer. Have some business intelligence about the number of viewers, the volume, quality of service in different regions, and also any impact on the quality of service like buffering, which really would kill the user experience or bad network situations and uh, so you get a full full insight into the QoS and QoE for your live streaming application. The adaptive bitrate player I mentioned automatically adjusts to the right quality available in the network. So we send several renditions out to the network, similar as other adaptive bitrate systems, but optimized for ultra low latency. And the player automatically connects to the right quality level available in the network on the device you are using or your audience is using. Here you see a test setup running, which I do myself, a real life setup. I send a live stream from a mobile phone and uh, the playback is done in low latency on several devices at the same time. So that really shows the experience with the hand wave gesture of ultra low latency live streaming. It's really easy to get started when you use a free live encoder software. You can start live streaming from your own webcam. We support using the OBS Open Broadcaster software, Open Broadcaster Studio, which is an open source development and which can be downloaded for free. We also sponsor this software. It is running very reliable and also for low latency live streaming. So try it out and try yourself and learn how you can use ultra live streaming very easily on your own web page. NanoPlayer is really easy to embed and use on your own web page. You just need some lines of JavaScript code, which you can copy paste to your web page, and then this live stream runs under your brand on your own web page application. It can even be yet simpler with just one line. You can copy paste an iframe 
into your web page that can be used for using live streaming within WordPress or any other content management system where you don't need any web development and just co can just copy a small code snippet into your page. We have several pricing options, very simple pricing based on packages, uh, based on streaming volume and additional options and support packages are, are available so we can guarantee certain uh, SLAs and support activities around your events or 24-7 live streams. Let me give you a short wrap up. Interactive live streaming is really here to stay. It creates a lot of new opportunities for your business. And there's still room for innovations, with technology available now for large-scale rollout on any device. It can be mobile first for any kind of live video content in the world. Thanks a lot for joining my presentation. Hope to see you soon and reach out to me if you have any questions. So, yeah, I, I, I'm a bit uh, curious about some facts. Uh, that I, I noted down during the video, and uh, I wanted to ask you if uh, uh, what is the biggest learning about uh, interactive use cases because you've been uh, around for quite a while now. Yeah, of course, the world has changed a lot in the last two years, somehow due to the pandemic. We see a lot of new use cases coming up, a lot of innovation is coming. But very important is that you have something reliable, robust enough to stay connected, to have the interaction experience for everyone who needs to join the event somehow. So the 24-7, 365 approach is, is very important. And also things like mobile first, we see more and more coming that uh, really the majority of streams is uh, taken now on mobile devices and directly in the browser somehow. So. You just want to join this conference, not sure about your conference here, but uh, I'm sure there's a significant amount of mobile viewers here and mobile participants. So that's really the ease of use, which you would like to have um, being either an office or at home, sitting on the couch or even commuting when you're on the train or anywhere that you can directly uh, be part of that uh, experience together. What we also see is that it's important to have a complete understanding of the or workflow and idea you would like to solve. So if you would like to monetize your content, is it for um, paid service, is it, is it for a free service, but how do you make a business out of that? So of course you can always use something like YouTube, but then you're in the YouTube Google world, but if you would like to make your business uh, branded around that for closed environments or for some more branded environments, it's important to have a clear understanding about your monetization. And of course, things like uh, technical challenges, uh, how many viewers you do expect, what's your outreach, geolocations, et cetera, et cetera and which parts of the world are people sitting. So um, that's, that's important to understand. And then you also can need to be aware of certain, uh, let's say the, the success rate of this event, which means which you need to measure somehow, like uh, how, how long are the participants online, how long are they staying connected, What's the bounce rate, uh, things like that. Yeah, no, that's good to know. We've been uh, using uh, uh, YouTube to stream our uh, conferences. Uh, it's been really good for us. Uh, we will definitely start uh, a test with you guys starting next year. <laughs> uh, I just want to also ask, uh, in terms of uh, someone uh, implementing uh, such a service. Is there any business value in it? Or uh, do you think that, uh, uh, is it for everyone? I just wanted to ask you. Yeah, that's what I wanted to point out that you need to have an idea about uh, how you monetize your content somehow. So of course, if you are using a non-free service uh, that costs money for you, you need to pay for the transfer. So there needs to be a monetization and um, any kind of um, benefit for your and, and any value for your business. So if that makes sense, like for, as I mentioned, in the live concert environment, you might connect that to tickets or to merchandise you sell or in a enterprise uh, conferencing environment, there's a business value because you need to reach your employees somehow. So that's really important to understand what's your approach in terms of making a business out of that. Got it. Okay. So, yeah. And, and in which markets do you currently operate uh, and expand in this in the future? 
or uh, could you maybe let us know about some of the countries in which you operate and, and what are your plans for uh, expansion? Yeah, sure. So we, as a German and European company, we always uh, thought global. So it's uh, still a bit surprising that we have uh, much more customers outside Germany than within Germany. Um, but uh, the, the global approach makes a lot of sense because with internet and live streams, you can you can stay global and you can um, create a global system. And as you are doing now, you are doing uh, conferences for North America, Europe, wherever people are, it uh, doesn't matter anymore where they are located. So, um, and that's our approach as well. Um, we really have a global approach and try to uh, improve the reachability also and quality of service for any part of the world. Um, going forward, but there are certain businesses which are more focused on regions like professional webcasting and uh, uh, these environments are more like North America, Europe, but also gaming, for example, is very strong in Asia. As I mentioned, we have auctioning customers in Australia, so it's a bit uh, dependent on the use case and uh, application you are doing. There are also differences between countries, but generally uh, when it comes down to the live video, it's uh, the same system. So it's important to not think on uh, global or uh, continents borders here. Yeah, got it. Yeah, it's a funny thing that uh, before before the pandemic started, uh, we were doing, uh, we hosted, we, we launched an online radio in 2018 and they did not have that many listeners. Uh, and after the pandemic started and uh, even before the pandemic, we tested some of our conferences in hybrid format to have the streaming available for viewers, and nobody was interested. It's like uh, and now it's it's the other way around. People are. Uh, I don't think that uh, many people would appreciate a conference that uh, does not have a live stream now. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. exactly. And, and, and since we're talking about this type of uh, push. Uh, what innovation and trends do you see coming? Uh, I see a lot of room for innovation still. So uh, video now is uh, used by everybody, uh, obviously. So everyone knows how to use Zoom and how to use the video in the browser somehow. If they are used to the system, so it's easy, easy enough to use. But still there um, are, there's room for innovations here in terms of user experience, also connecting the hybrid space, as I mentioned, People on stage, um, if everyone comes back or not everyone comes back, but people are coming back to physical shows, they want to connect still to virtual participants. So the mix and match of different uh, use cases is uh, very challenging, but it's also a great opportunity for new innovations to create new, new ways of um, interactive applications, which really connect people in a useful way and keep this interactive experience as a, at, at a very high level. And uh, as we are doing here in Zoom, that's still a closed system, but you connect it to YouTube and you have that on your web page. So that's components which you can think of. And if you would like to make that completely branded to your uh, application, then you can think of newer ways and also maybe let the audience interact directly with us and to ask questions, maybe do some polling around uh, these events. So that's a lot of innovations, which are not only technically challenging and um, Make a make a great experience, but also from the um, from the UI and user experience. There's, there's, there are a lot of innovations which I see here. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, so we just wait. We we just have to wait and see now. <laughs> okay, Oliver, it's been nice talking to you, everyone. Uh, Oliver will be back with a, a different uh, topic uh, this week on uh, Thursday during the European Gaming Q4. So Oliver, uh, thank you for this session.